Hey everybody, Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And in last week's video, I opposed the question to the viewers to see, would you like to see videos that were shorter or longer than what we typically average? We average uh, 9 to 14 minutes or so on most videos. And the theme of the responses were, hey, if you're doing a DIY kind of project, we'd really like to see longer with more detail of the part of the work you're actually doing. Uh, so I'm going to try out a new format. Um, this video will likely be a little bit longer. I haven't started editing yet, so I don't know exactly how long. Uh, you can probably see behind me, I've cut the computer up and I'm actually starting to do the editing. So um, so when this is all through, we'll see how long it is and uh, let me know what you guys think. Look, Make some comments down below. Do you like this format? Do you like the longer detail? Or would you prefer uh, maybe multi-part uh, information? Thanks everybody. Hope you enjoy the video. Anyone who's been watching our channel for a while, you know we're about to embark on a pretty large fiberglass project. We've been removing the teak decks of the boat, and we're about to do the, another layer of fiberglass over the decks after we've had to replace and uh, repaired the places in the core that needed to be. Uh, and before I do that job, I just wanted to do something else as a test. Um, I think I'm going to make a small deck box, something that's going to fit between the coach house and the butterfly hatch. So uh, let me show you what I'm working on. So I'm really making a pretty simple box. It's only going to be about 27 inches long, about um, 14 inches um, wide at its uh, its widest section it actually gets about 11 inches in the center and it's gonna be a foot tall just a small box that we can use to keep a few tools or little supplies or whatever we have on deck but I figured this is a good way to do it it's just quarter inch plywood and one by two I'm gonna route the edges in the one by two so they have nice smooth transitions and really this is nothing more than um, a quick and easy frame or, or um, mold that I can use to wrap fiberglass around both the inside and outside and make it fully waterproof and, and strong this is wood so we can make the box. That's right. Okay, you ready to start working on it? Yeah. All right, little help. At this point, it's very rudimentary. It's just essentially 27 inches down the long side, 12 to uh, 12 inches on the on the short side, and then because the coach house kind of has a bit of an angle here, this is the center of the boat. The butterfly hatch will be right in front of this, so I want that side to be flat, and this side I want it to go along kind of the same angle as the coach house. So. This will give me that type of a scenario. Um, and I'm just working up the angles right now for these corner pieces like this. We just figure out this angle here and get those cut so we can attach some screws into those. Again, I'm not really worried about the look and feel of this. This box is just here to give me the, the, the starting place to encase all the fiberglass. Right. Having the bandsaw is pretty darn handy. So I've just uh, used this little tool to get the angle that I need here. It's a little less than a 90 degree angle and I didn't even measure to see exactly what it was because all I have to do is set this right down here along the table flat and along with the blade adjust it to the height I want which I've already done. This is at, sitting at some angle already and uh, we're all set to go. The curiosity. There we go. Looks like about a 10 degree angle or so. All right, I will admit it's an odd shape but again it's taking the shape of the coach house so I just have it sitting on its side and I'm about to go ahead and mount the bottom on it now. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll be all set after that. All right, micro balloons, some gel coat, good price on life seal, so I got some more wax additive for the gel coat, and I have my MEKP hardener for that. So I'm gonna put all this back in here for now. The micro balloons are really what I'm likely gonna be using today. And oh, a couple of different mixing buckets. I think I'll be using the small one as well. So, MEKP in here. MEKP doesn't like metal, so we're going to make sure it doesn't touch it. All right, got our polyester resin, our MEKP dispenser. I'm going to move this over here. So the first step of the project is going to be to create some fillets, uh, which are basically just a smoother radius in any 90 degree corner. What that allows for is for the fiberglass mat to flow a little easier along that curved edge as opposed to having a hard edge. That gets a little bit brittle over time. Uh, normally what you saw me pull out of the box a moment ago, the micro balloons, is what you would use to do this. You mix up your uh, your polyester resin, your MEKP, your catalyst, and you add in the uh, micro balloons or uh, they have several different, there's several different uh, materials you can add, but that's a common one. Um, I wanted something a little bit more, uh, provide, I wanted something that would provide a little bit more strength. So what you're seeing me do here is cut up small pieces of what they call uh, woven roving, 
which is just a fiberglass mat. It's a thicker one. It's sort of interlaced uh, thin twines of fiberglass material. And I just have a whole series of these that I kind of peeled off the corner of the of the roving. And I'm just trimming these into quarter or half inch sizes. Uh, when you look down in the cup, it's really just a cup full of puffy fuzz. It looks like cotton almost. Uh, but that's the, the reason I'm doing this. Now in hindsight, I learned a little bit about this. It's a little harder to smooth that uh, in those corners than it would have been had I not put it in there. But it helped give it some strength and it's in the inside of the box and it looks just fine. So as I was inspecting the box after assembling it, I started to think I, th I want a thicker top. When you open the lid of the box, I want those, um, those uh, vertical surfaces to be a little thicker. So I decided to put uh, a one by two frame along the top portion where the box actually opens. Uh, so all I'm doing is I'm rough cutting some one by two again. The beauty of building this in fiberglass is my thought was I don't have to have perfect edges. If I was building a cabinet here, these would be 45 degree miters and hardwood and all that good stuff. But because I'm going to wrap the whole darn thing in fiberglass anyway, you're not going to see the fact that it's a butt joint 90 degree here or something like that. So you can see I just cut these to the right length and, uh, and I'm going to do this all the way around the box. Um, just to make it a little bit easy here, I am only laying it down on the table and then I'm running uh, just some stainless steel screws that I'm countersinking down into the plywood just a little bit to uh, allow the fiberglass to sit smooth over the top of them. So pretty easy and I'm going to do this around all of the sides to give it that, that thick look. Just a matter now of repeating around all the sides. So I'm doing the sides here and using clamps to hold them together. The front led to a little bit more interesting work. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and zoom in and show you what I'm doing. I've trimmed the wood here so that it comes flush with the other uh, corner piece that I also had to trim because of the angles. Um, again, once it's held in place here, it's just a matter of getting it level with the top of the actual plywood. Uh, and I have this really convenient bit. This thing is wonderful. It's, uh, it's a quick bit. In one side of it, it's a drill with a built-in countersink, and that's what you see me running right here. Uh, the beauty is it's got a little locking mechanism. You basically just slide the locking me mechanism out, flip the bit over, and on the other side of the bit is a built-in Phillips screwdriver. So it allows me to quickly run a screw right into these and get these things countersunk right to the surface as well. And then I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side as well. So uh, let me show you what the finished product looks like. Uh, at least of the wooden box. And you can see the top surface here is all flush and a little thicker. As I set the box up right, I realized that I may have an issue here where when I put this on the deck, the deck has a slight contour. So I really felt like I needed a little bit of um, some gaps here. Uh, and initially I was just gonna put small circular wooden pads on the bottom of it underneath. But it made a little more sense to just create something that I would mold right in. Uh, so I essentially just cut two one by twos along the edge. All right, so I've got this held. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this right on the corner here so I can get this you know, day before the 4th of July, the fireworks will start. But I want to get this to go into the um, other 1x2 I have going down. So I'm going to go right about here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn right this back around. Get these started back in here. Now, I'm not going to go tight until I get this one started because I don't want to chance uh, wrenching that one down and having this move a little bit and come off of the pilot hole. There we go. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to mix up my fillets to run along these edges here and along some of the inside edges and then I'm going to let this sit. Uh, the idea here is uh, tomorrow I should be able to come in and lay my glass down. The fillets are basically nothing more than, if you look right here, instead of having this 90 degree turn, I want it to be a little bit rounded. So I'm going to take some thickened, uh, what they call peanut butter, so it's basically thickened polyester resin with some micro balloons and some of that chopped up um, mat I used. And that's just going to be put down in here. One easy way to do this is use a popsicle stick or, uh, or a back of a spoon. I'm just going to use the back of a little plastic spoon to smooth it out doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, this is all going to be completely coated with glass and ultimately it's going to have a couple of layers and then a gel coat over it, sanded and painted. So I'm not worried about, you know, this maybe not being 100% um, perfectly smooth in that radius, but what I am looking for is the ability for the glass to smoothly bond to it rather than a potential stress or crack place. If I were to bend that mat at a 90 degree angle, it basically breaks those fibers as opposed to laying them around it. So 
that's uh, my mission and goal. I'm going to do the same thing inside here along these edges and along these edges so that when I lay my glass down here, it goes over this entire top and then it smooths down onto this. At least that's the thought. We'll see how that works. The thing I have learned about this stuff is it's disgusting on your hands, so I'm going to do everything I can to keep it from getting on. So four cc's for every pint of resin. That's 16 ounces. That's, um, that's probably more than I'm going to use. I'm, I'm just going to mix up eight ounces of this to start. You can always mix more if need be. All right, I'm going to put my micro balloons and my fibers in here just so they don't blow away or tip over. Um, let me open this up. So again, it's going to be four cc's for that pint. So basically it's going to be two cc's for a half a pint. Now I'm going to mix it up a little bit more hardener. I have found with this that if I mix it up like that, it doesn't harden very good. So I'm going to add just a little bit extra to it. So I'm still going to go to my eight ounce mark. Half a pint. Here. So I'm going to do this on, on a towel or something in case I make any kind of a mess. Now the first line is two and a half, then five. There we go. I've got about three right there. It's just a matter of squeezing the bottle and it comes up to the top. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this in here. really a pretty simple process. MEKP is very dangerous. You don't want to make it have contact with any metal. So I'm being very cautious with that there. And now it's just a matter of stirring very gently. And I'm going to stir this for about a minute and a half before I start adding some micro balloons to it. Start sprinkling some of these little fibers in here. You don't want them all in there, just some. And that's going to help give us some structural integrity. I don't want to completely thicken it with that. I really want to use my um, I want to use my micro balloons to thickening. And it is starting to. Uh, this is actually already starting to set up a little bit. So I'm going to have to work pretty quick here. And what I'm going for is a peanut butter consistency. That is the consistency we want, and, that, and the reason we want that is we can we can work with that and have it stay in place. Just a matter of you know taking a little bit of this stuff here, and we want to kind of goop it right down in that corner. And we don't have to go overly neat. If we're gonna we're gonna press it down in there with the uh, with the spoon back into the spoon, but we also don't want to waste it. So if we can be a little bit uh, careful, it certainly help us out get any on the wood, right? We just take this and, and scrape along the wood, kind of pushing it into that corner as we go. This is also the beauty of, of actually doing your, um, laying your first um, run of glass down as well, because you can kind of lay it right down into this and help smooth it out that way as well. There's two schools of thought, right? One, make the fillets first, and then uh, and come back and lay the glass on it. The other one is, while this is still wet, lay your glass right onto it. So, see this. So, take the back of the spoon, just smooth it right into that corner.
try and do the same thing here. This is what they call kicking too soon, and this is hot. I, matter of fact, that's burn your hand hot, which isn't good. I, I mixed it too rich. That's the, the only reason that would happen. And that's an amateur mistake right there. You can tell it's looking a little better. So on the on the fourth joint, I'm starting to get it a little bit neater as I go. I wouldn't say much. I'm gonna be wrong. I'm not ready to take credit for that, but a little better than the first few. doing this is what I'm finding is um, and it's a lot easier to do where you can see it I'll give you that right up front but key is not putting too much of this on there I mean it's amazing how far a little bit goes for rounding it if you put just a small amount in and, and then work it down into the corner you'll have less you have to scrape up out of it Again, I'm not looking for perfection here all I'm looking to do is fill this gap a little bit so that when I come in here tomorrow and I wrap cloth all the way around it. I don't have an air pocket in there. Notice I have a couple little wooden spacers in here so that if I do have any on the outside I don't chance it uh, you know actually adhering it to this old table. So I'm gonna set this up, got the fillets done. Tomorrow we're gonna start laying in the uh, the glass and we'll put uh, chop strand over this whole thing and we should be good. Sweaty nasty hands. Well, I said before, if you do boat repairs, chances are you have an epoxy box. And this is my epoxy box. And what not in it. I actually have two of them. This one's just one I keep some supplies in. The other one is one of those Rubbermaid totes, which I should be using because I have been one of these things leak. That milk crate's not going to do a lot to keep it from getting all over it. That is still hot to the touch, man. Tomorrow I'll see if I can break it out of there and reuse my little container, but I doubt it. I'm sure I ruined that one. Any good project, it goes longer than you expect and means it's dark while I'm closing things up. So, back to the boat. See y'all in the morning. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even Tumblr. Please take a moment and go over to our website at svdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, fellow dreamers.